Hello and welcome. Well, today we're going to install a uh, DRO on my Wells Index Mill. Uh, we're going to start with the linear scales and install them. Uh, every mill is a little bit different, uh, plus I like to do things a little different. Um, but there's probably a million different ways to install linear scales. Uh, the main important thing is that they're straight and rigid. Uh, so, so that they don't bind and you get accurate measurements. Uh, the uh, DRO I'm installing is made by 2Auto. I don't know if it's any good. They're available on Amazon and eBay. Uh, I think they'll probably do just fine. It's going to be a big learning curve for me. Uh, I've never used a DRO other than a very simple one that just measures length. Anyway, uh, the DRO comes with some basic, uh, not the DRO, the, the scales come with some basic hardware. Let's take a look at what it comes with. A uh, couple of brackets, uh, screws, and aluminum cover, probably just to protect the linear, uh, linear scales from oil or coolant. Uh, but I used uh, some aluminum, eighth inch aluminum wall. 2x3 tubing that I cut in half and that's what I used to mount the linear scales to and I mounted these to the milling machine. Now, I think it's probably rigid enough to do it that way. Uh, the first part of the video, about 10 minutes in, uh, the audio is messed up. That's about the point where I realized I didn't have my wireless mic plugged in. But it's still usable video and I can't do it over so uh, just bear with me and I think you'll I think it's still a usable video. Anyway, let's get started. One option to mounting this scale is right here. And that's a great option. But my table goes all the way back to the dovetails. So if I put the put the scale back here, I limit my travel by probably about slightly over an inch. And I really didn't want to do that. So I'm putting it on the front, but it's got its own set of complications. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, there's the table there, all the way to one side. And I did that just because, well, I'll show you. I can mount this anywhere on here, as long as this has good travel. And th this is long, like an inch and a half longer than my table travel. Uh, but I got this here. This is a stop that runs into that right there. And that's a, a table stop. And it's kind of handy to have. Uh, you know, you can use your DROs, but it's nice to have a good solid stop. Uh, so you don't overshoot on the DRO. But... To use that, to keep that, and put the scale on is difficult. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, if you mount that like that, the scale is higher than the, than the table. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remake that. I'm going to worry about that later. And I'm going to mount that right there. And I'm going to mount it as uh, distance from the table. And the reason I'm going to uh, mount it a, a little distance is uh, right here. Let me get a different camera angle. I've got a machine surface right here that I can mount a plate to. And if I space this away from the table like that, I can just make a flat plate to hold this while I move well the, well, the table moves. And that'll send a signal back to the DRO display. Uh, but it needs some kind of cover. So I got this here. And this distance here is allows me to use that table travel stop. I'm going to have to redesign this so I can get a wrench up between the DRO and the table to lock it in place. But I don't think that's going to be an issue. Hopefully not. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to mount 
that right there and I think I'm going to seal it to the table. If I left a gap in it, uh, chips would get stuck down in there unless I left a big gap. I'm going to mount that right there and then I'm going to mount the scale to this. It would probably be good to mount it to the table but it makes it a lot easier to mount it to this and I think this is going to be plenty strong. So what I got to do now, I'm going to mount this off center and that allows me to take, take advantage of this machined area here. So I've got to decide where I want to put my holes. And I don't really want to drill into my table, but there's no other alternative. So I'm not going to drill a hole here because that's where my reservoir is for my coolant. Uh, so I'll put a bolt right in here. On the other side, and one in the middle. I've reset my DRO to zero and then I'm going to go 100,000 further. And then reset to zero again. This little tip is 200 thousandths in diameter so I found the edge with that re-zeroed the DRO, moved it a hundred thousandths and that made the drill center on the edge of that vise. I'm using these uh, Saber drills. They got a reduced point. Uh, they call it a pilot tip point. I got two sizes of them but it's kind of handy because you don't have to drill a pilot hole, or not a pilot hole, but uh, use a center drill or a spotting drill to uh, start your hole. Uh, we're going to drill through this and into this. This will be the hole for my Allen wrench and this will be the hole for the, for the uh, screw behind it. already measured the thickness of that and done my math and I need to drill a hole 700 thousandths from the back. 700 thousandths. Now we're going to mount this to the front of the table. Okay, I'll get that fairly firmly in place. We take a 3 16 drill, which is our clearance hole for the uh, 1024 button end screws, and um, mark it and then go back with the tap size drill, which 532nd. I gotta go deeper with this one because this is the tap drill. If I can leave this in place and still get deep enough, I'll use it. it can be used kind of like a drill guide to make sure I'm going straight. There we go. Probably want to go of course the thickness of this is only gonna be about I might need to go a little bit longer on the screw, but... Probably need to seal that. I'm not going to put very much because... For one, I just need it sealed at the top, and 
Two, I don't want it to uh, I want it to seat firmly on the on the table. I put counter sink screws in here. I should have uh, done this in the drill press. But... That'll work. Here's what I got here. I think they call them a barrel nut. I just happen to have them. It should work perfect in this. Like it. Okay, I apologize for the bad audio. I didn't have my wireless microphone on. It's on now. Uh, I'm going to mount that right there. I got to put a plate. And I've got a plate. It came, the uh, DRO came with this plate right here. And these holes match that. So, I think I can utilize that. Cut this off right there. Drill a couple of holes in there. That'll work. And then I can fine tune the rail this way to line up. Yeah, this piece that came with the DRO wasn't long enough. I'm going to have to make a new one. Hmm. Ooh. That'll be okay. Well, if I can get these properly positioned, that's great. If not, I'll slot these holes. Okay, there's a little spacer between the slide and that rail. And that has to come out. This screw right here is not real tight. And that's because I wanted to align everything. It's kind of found its own position, I think. But I need to tighten that screw and then make this rail parallel all the way across the table. In other words, measure the gap right there and then measure the gap on the other side and make sure they're exactly the same. Which I guess I'll have to do with a feeler gauge or something. That's it. It's tested throughout its range. I guess I could clean up this mess first. Oh, it looks good. I got a feeling I'm going to have trouble with making the table stop work. Maybe not. I have to get really inventive there. Well, there's the uh, x-axis on the 
DRO done. Now all we got to do is Y and Z. I like it, I like it. Okay, let's put this uh, Y axis on here. I'm thinking I'm going to do that just like I did the other one. Bolt this on here. Got a little radius right there. Probably put a bolt right there too. You grind a radius on that. Set of those screw in uh, dowel pin marker. I might, I might have some. Need a look. I found some I made. <laughs> I can get them in there far enough. That might be enough without that extra support out here. I don't know. I, I know it doesn't take much power to move this sliding section, the reader, whatever you want to call it. But metal flexes, so you got to be really conscientious of that. I could actually mount it right there. Probably need to put it like that. That way the cord is in the back. Put those spacers there because if oil drips down, it won't go to the DRO. It'll it'll drip off the edge of this rather than into the DRO or into the uh, scale. I don't know how much oil will be there, but there's always a possibility of that. Okay. Now I've got to figure out a way to connect that to that. Okay, I got a plan, different plan. <laughs> but I got to make this a countersink. Okay, I'm going to try something here, and I'm a little bit concerned about it, but I think it'll be okay. 
I'm going to cut a section of this bar off. And this is a 3 8 hole in there about an inch deep with a set screw. And I'm going to drill a hole in here, slip that on there in the center, and then mount a plate diagonal between this and the, re and the reader here, or the, I don't know what you want to call it, the sliding section of the uh, slide there. I need to drill a hole in this bar, and I guess I'll pin it. I don't really know. I could thread it, and threading it might be the best way. Yeah, thread the pin in there. That would be tight. I'll do that. Oh, yeah, I was a little concerned about that. Have to mill part of that off. I guess I could just grind it off. I grind it off. Now I can make a piece of shape like that. That might be easier than trying to figure an angle going like that. That way I can access that set screw too. It won't be the bracket won't be covering that set screw. I'll just make an L-shaped bracket. Ah, uh, let's see. It makes it easier to keep everything square too. Apparently I got a 9 inch travel and this is 9.8, a 9.8 scale. So I need to be mindful of that. I could run out of travel if I don't position this right. Plate needs to be about 7 and 3 quarter by 7 and 3 quarter by 3 and a quarter. Seven and three quarter by three and a quarter. All right, after I locate the holes underneath there, I'll cut it like that and then I can lock it. I can access that set screw. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut some spacers there. Uh, I think that's close enough. Looks like it's just a tiny bit off. If necessary, I'll bore the holes out bigger.
much I got on the back side there. Got about a quarter inch of travel there. Hopefully that'll be all right. If not, I'll make a new bracket or slot the holes a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it reads clear up to the end just fine. Hopefully. Well, there's X and Y. And now we're going to do Z. Okay, we're working on the Z axis, or the knee. And uh, I'm not going to have one on the quill. Really, it's good practice to leave the quill completely retracted while you're milling anyway. So I'm thinking this is a machine surface here and here. So it gives me some good mounting surfaces. Now the table comes back to just beyond this surface, so I'm going to have to space out whatever I mount to here. Now I could make a long bar and just mount the DR, DRO to that long bar. In other words, put that on there and put another bar on top and mount, mount the rail to it. But I think I'm going to uh, cut a piece kind of like I did with the other ones from this uh, 2 by 3 tubing. And of course it's just an example. Mount that like that and then mount the DRO in it. And it's going to be the sticking up about this high right here. But that will stop debris from the table from getting into the DRO. So that's the plan anyway. I'm going to uh, cut this down so that The DRO, I mean the rail, sits in there just like that. And I may have put a cap on it too. But then I can mount this to the column. Uh, somehow. <laughs> this, the column is not square, but you have to mount it to something. So, it's my only choice. First thing I'm going to do is cut down a piece of this. Yeah, what I need to do is lower the knee all the way because I don't want this hitting the column. Okay, there's down all the way. Yeah, I think that's about it right there. Mounted up high like that because the column gets wider toward the bottom and that'll allow me to move my bolts in a little bit and a little, little better mounting. need to attach those two together and then I'll drill through both of them to mount to the mill. Okay, 
main objective was to just attach that parallel with an offset. Uh, that surface right there will be uh, aligned with the machine surface on the knee. I'll show you. Right there I'll be able to transfer my holes where, where this is lined up just perfect. First I'm going to mount my DRO in this bar, hopefully. Okay, I got a piece of three quarter inch square up against this. I'm using that as a guide to set up against this machine surface to keep everything straight. That will go right there while I'm transferring my holes. I made a drill extension so that I can get square to that. Well, that's fairly straight. That's good. Okay, I've got the knee really close to all the way up. I probably should make sure it is all the way up. That's about as... <laughs> I'm going to touch the quill in about an inch. Wow. Maybe I didn't get a long enough DRO. <laughs> Anyway, I want to mount this about right there to the column. Okay, I'm going to assume that the, the, this reader is at the bottom of this tag. Now I'm going to drop it all the way. Okay. Well, it looks like I could have gone with a little bit longer DRO. <laughs> well, I could have gone another inch longer. What I'm going to do, that's bottomed out all the way, I'm going to go mount it right there and then explore how high I can go up. I, I would never have it up as high as I had it just now because it was touching the end of the quill. Put an end mill in there or a bed or whatever and you'd never need to raise it that high. But there might be a need where I can go need to go all the way down and that's where it is right now. So now I gotta figure out how to mount that reader to that. That's gonna be a pain in the neck. I may have to set up the mill to uh, make this block here.
probably be better to have some kind of adjustable bracket. But if it works, it's, it's fairly simple. And if it doesn't work, I guess I'll put a bracket on there. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. We got all the scales on here, and next week we will hook up the display. Uh, it's gonna be a big learning curve for me. Hopefully all the scales work. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.